Good morning. Thanks for hopping on and for joining Gems for the Journey. I'm so glad you're here. I want to give you a few brief nuggets just to help jumpstart your day. My name is Joey Raspberry, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, empowerment speaker, keynote speaker, faith-based speaker, business speaker, writer, author, ghost writer, columnist, essayist, all that fun stuff. Educator, I'm so glad I'm here this morning and I'm glad that you're here too. Come on in the room, hon. Take your shoes off. Get comfortable. You know how I like to do it. There's some milk, coffee, orange juice, cappuccino, eggs, bacon, donuts. All that good stuff is over in the next room. Grab yourself something to drink. Get yourself something to eat. And I'll be right here waiting for you. I hope you're doing exceptionally well this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, honey, I know. I know you love your spouse, your baby daddy, your boo. You love the neighbor next door. You love your sorority sisters. You love your friends down the street, you love your friends at church, you love the CEO, you love the COO, you love all of those people, and they have titles, and they are important, and they do have power, but they don't have the power to make a Friday, oh no, only God can do that, T-G-I-F, thank God it's Friday, it has been a challenging week for me, and if it's been challenging for me, I know it may be challenging for some of you too, but we're still here. Yeah, we are still standing. We may have had to cry and shed a few tears, but we are still standing. I want you to try not to complain this morning. Don't complain. You know why? Because any day above ground is a good one. If you don't believe me, call your local funeral home and cemetery and you'll see just how blessed you are. Oh yeah, we are still standing. They laughed at your crucifixion. I want to know what are they going to do about your resurrection, but you are. <laughs> My friend, you are going to get back up again. Oh, yes, you are. They talked about you. They ridiculed you. They talked about your family. They, they went around reading your resume. But guess what? God has their rap sheet. It ain't nothing that they can say about you that God can't say about them. Hold your head up, honey. Stick your chest out. You're going to make it. You are going to make it. I'm grateful this morning. Grateful for the train that didn't derail, the boat that didn't sink, and the plane that did not crash. When you and I were asleep last night, dead to this world, didn't know what was going on, God sent an angel. Oh, yes, he did. He said, go by her bedside and wake her up. She's on an assignment this morning. So you are not here by accident. And the alarm clock did not wake you up. The hand of God woke you up. Oh, yes, it did. Because he has an assignment for you that is not completed. I appreciate you being here this morning. We are live and in color. Oh, yes, we are. If this is your first time, please don't let it be your last time. And if you happen to stop by later during the day, just type in replay in the comment bar, and that will let me know that you were here. I want to thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting. I do go back throughout the day and read all of your comments. You inspire me. You inspire me, and I hope I inspire you. Iron sharpens iron. If you get any bad news today, any bad news whatsoever, click return to sender. Send it back where it came from. We're not having that. Not on this wonderful, terrific, fantastic Friday. We're not having that. We've worked all week, and the Lord has blessed us to be here. And this Friday, we only want good news. Serve notice to everybody that you come in contact with that you serve an awesome God. You and I can decree and declare that there's nobody like him. I know you love mama, daddy, husband, wife, children, co-workers. You love all of those people, and they are important, and they do have power, but they can't do what God has done. There is nobody like him. Thank him for the victories, both great and small. I don't care what the victories are. They're yours. Yeah, they're yours. You better thank him. Last year, last month, five years ago, your your marriage was rocky. Yeah, but, but today y'all are living in love. You better thank God for that. Yeah, you better thank God for that. You know what it's like to have to visit a son or a daughter who's incarcerated. That's not a good feeling for any parent. And you've been staying on your knees. But this time, this year, at this moment, on September the 2nd, 2022, you can put your hands on all your children at the same time. Isn't God good? You better thank him for the victories. You better thank him. You 60, 70, you decided to go back to school. You got your grades. You got your grades. You're working on your associate's degree. You made a B in all of those classes. Thank God. It could have been else. You made B's. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. You count your blessings one by one, and you don't, don't let anybody discard what God is doing for you. 
I want to ask God to do what I always ask him to do on every call. To help somebody heal somebody, deliver somebody, restore somebody, redeem somebody, reposition somebody, turn somebody's life around, set somebody free, give somebody another chance. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Sometimes we just need somebody to give us another chance. And when man and woman won't do it, God will. How many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times, seven times, seven. So don't go around. Counting how many times you should forgive somebody. Don't go around counting somebody else's sin. The only difference is you and I sin differently. So whoever's counting you out, that's their sin. They're lying. <laughs> They're lying making you think or pretend that they don't have any faults. We all have them. So don't count anybody else's. Count your own and ask God to help you clean that up. And thank him for his grace and for his mercy. That's the only reason we look as clean as we do. His grace and his mercy cleans us up. And if he cleans us up, he can clean somebody else up too. It can change your lifestyle. Yes, he can. He can change your language. Yes, he can. Yeah. It may take some time and effort, just like it did for, for you. But what he did for you, he can do for somebody else. Calvin Godine uh, sends a heart. Good morning, Calvin. Calvin, I'm so proud of you. I give your mother my love. Calvin, I love you. You are doing so well, young man. You are doing so well. I'm keeping my eyes on you. God has his hands on you, son. Don't you give up. Don't you give out and don't you give in. You keep your hand to the plow. I can see it all over you. God is doing something different. You hold on, Calvin. You tie knot and hold on. God is going to get you there. Yvette Marie Fuller, my colleague from SWCC, says, Good Friday morning, ladies. Good morning to you, Yvette. I'm so glad to have you here. Sister Ira Booker, First Lady of the Shelbyville Church of Christ in Tennessee, says, Good morning, sisters. Good morning. Sister Ira, I had a hearty laugh the other day. You left a post about you and Mr. B wearing white. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. B wanted to wear his white. And I think you mentioned uh, something that your mother had told you. But anyway, y'all look good in your white. Yes, you did. I don't care what season it was. You looked good. But it was a joke and it made me laugh. Sometimes we need to be able to just laugh. Just a good laugh. And that was the day when I read that, Sister Ira. That was the day when I had a very challenging day. So just to be able to sit back and laugh. It felt so good. Thank you for giving me laughter. Georgia Charlie says, good morning, Queens. Good morning, Georgia. So glad you were here. She sends flowers, hearts. <laughs> she sends all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Alicia Harper-Smith, my other SWCC colleague, beautiful woman of God, says, good morning, sunshine and blessings. Alicia, my mom told me to tell you hi. Georgia Charlie says, me too, sis. Thank you, Lord. We made it. We made it. Quinta Brown says, good morning, sisters. Good morning to you, Quinta. So glad you're here. Georgia Charlie says, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She sends praying hands. Uh, good morning, TGIF sisters. Yes, indeed. Thank God it's Friday. That's from Sister Marjorie. Bernita Martin says, good morning, sunshine. It's a fantastic Friday. Yes, name it and claim it. Georgia Charlie says, you inspire me too, Queen Sister. Love you, dearly, and I love you back. Georgia Charlie says, God is a good all the time. He is not sometimes, not part of the time. He is good all the time. Allison Borrow Traversal says, good morning, my beautiful family. It's fantastic Friday. Let's rejoice in it. Yes, we want to rejoice. Thank you for that. To remind us to rejoice. Marjorie Malone says, you inspire me too. <laughs> Georgia Charlie says uh, all of the uh, all of that Lord for me. Remember me Lord. He will. Jennifer Catchin says good morning beautiful people. Good morning Jennifer. Carla Williams Douglas says good morning my sisters. Good morning to you Carla. Chris Carnett says good morning my sisters. Good morning Chris. Um, Ira Booker says thank you for laughter. Yes Lord. Chris um, Sister Rouser received the beautiful card that you sent out on our behalf. Thank you so much for the ministry. Your ministry of encouragement is so powerful. You know, sometimes when you're going through things, when you got sickness in your body, 
when somebody has died in your family, when somebody else is sick, when you're just going through them, when you need encouragement, you can go to the mailbox and just get a card and somebody sends you something inspiring. It turns your whole day around. Thank you, Chris. Your ministry is powerful. Dana Christy Brooks says, good morning. It's fabulous Friday, my beautiful sisters. Good morning to you, Dana. You are the beautiful one. One of former President Theodore Roosevelt's greatest rhetorical triumphs was a speech he did called Man in the Mirror, where he said, it is not the critic who counts. It is not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or whether doer of deeds could have done things better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause. Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement. And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who either know victory nor defeat. Isn't that powerful? It is the man in the arena who God is watching, even when the rest of the world may not understand it. It's not the critic. It's not the one who points out where you may have erred or strayed or, 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 or went wrong or, or made a bad turn or skinned your knee. No, no, no. It is not that person that God is worried about. He's worried about the one who's in the arena. The one who gets down in the trenches and is doing the critical work that maybe no one else even knows about. And this quote, my mother gave me this quote when I was a kid, about 10 years old. I have held it dear. It is the man in the arena who's doing the work. Doesn't matter if he makes a mistake or not. He's doing the work. It is not the critic. It is not the one who sits back and watches you. And points out where you may have went wrong. Your critics are not the ones who matter. This, this quote taught me three invaluable lessons. One is that it is not about winning or losing. No. No. No, it's not about winning or losing. It is about showing up and doing your life's work. Because some days you will win and truthfully some days you will lose. But can you stay in the arena and do your life's work? Can you show up when people are talking about you? Can you show up when people have conspired against you? Can you show up when people have created a campaign to mess up your name? Can you show up when they don't talk to you, when they don't include you, when you are not a part of the clique or the entourage? Can you still show up? Can you do life's critical work? Can you show up when they act like they don't love you? Yeah. Can you, can you show up? Can you still be on your assignment when it doesn't always feel good? Y'all are chiming in. I see you. Thank God. Thank God you are here this morning. Natasha says, uh, great morning, beautifuls. Bernitha says, good morning, sisters. Yolanda Francis Finley, my middle school classmate, beautiful woman of God. If you're in the Houston area, she's a master hairstylist. She says, good morning. Good morning, Yolanda. Georgia Charlie says, yes, uh, speak. 
Ida, my middle school classmate, beautiful woman of God, also an entrepreneur with a fabulous, fantastic, has been in existence, I know probably 30 years, uh, home health care uh, business, state of the art. Uh, I'm talking your 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 upper echelon. If you need a family member taken care of, she is the go-to. Ida Armstrong says, great morning, ladies. Sister Charlie says, yes, y'all are chiming in. So glad you're here. So glad you were here. Secondly, the only guarantees, the only guarantees you have that on some days you will be, the only guarantees you have, rather, is some days you're going to be talked about. Some days you're going to be kicked in the teeth. Some days you're going to be ridiculed. Some days you're going to get kicked in your butt. I said it. You're going to get kicked and they're going to kick you hard. If you're going to create anything, you've got to be prepared for that. It doesn't matter if you sing well, write well, speak well, paint well, draw well, do law well, uh, do agriculture where it doesn't matter what you do somebody is going to talk about you and ridicule you and kick you where it hurts critics will say and do things to try to stop you yeah they will say and do things to try to stop you i advise you this morning you keep working you keep getting up. You keep putting one foot in front of the other and give it your best shot. Success. Look at Serena Williams on the, on the front cover of Time magazine. She did her thing, did she not? Her thing was tennis. What is your thing? Success is not giving 15% on Monday and 20% on Tuesday and 17% on Wednesday and 25% on Thursday and taking off on Friday. No, no. Success is getting up every day, giving it 100% of everything that you have. You, my friend, you are the man or the woman in the arena. And some folk are not going to like you for that. Can you stay in the arena? Can you stay in the arena? Can you disregard what doesn't lend itself to the best part of you? Listen, I just got a call yesterday. I just got a call yesterday about a piece of commentary I wrote about Beyonce. I'm just writing, you know, as a social commentary writer. That article is going to be placed in a major magazine. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. I got kicked in the butt for that one. <laughs> you know, I got kicked in the teeth for that one. But scholastics and the academician world picked up on it. Yeah. To teach their students, their collegiate students, how to format a critical analysis essay. Yeah. It, it maybe didn't make it for the cut for the face-based community, but it made it somewhere else. You see how God works? Don't you see how God works? He can still take you to another level. Even when it feels like folk don't. And some stuff is not for everybody. Sometimes God is just talking to you. Can you handle when God is just talking to you? He's not talking to the crowd. Sophia is here. She says, good morning. Happy Friday. So glad to have you, Sophia. We're praying for your father. Marjorie says, yes. I just says, show up because uh, of the one that's on the inside of you will show up and show out. Absolutely. Marjorie says, show up. Stay in the arena. Stay in the arena. Stay put. Georgia said, they already are, but the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. It is. Nona Inslee is here. She says, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, Nona. Ida says, don't allow the voice of your hater to be louder than the voice of God. You have just spoken a word. Sylvia says, good morning, sisters. Relationship. He's our father. You're my kin. Stay in the ring. Stay in the ring. Bernita Shelby says, uh, look at God. Nona Inslee says, yes, God can do anything. He can do anything. You know, sometimes when you're in the arena and you, psh, you get hit hard enough and those punches keep coming. Have you ever watched a wrestling match? 
interesting. Sometimes you'll find yourself hanging on the ropes. You know, that, that hit was so hard. You didn't even see that one coming. You're just hanging on the ropes. Yeah. But if you can muster up enough strength to get back up, and sometimes you won't have a lot of strength. Yeah. You, you don't have to be a superwoman or a superman Christian. Some days you won't have a lot of strength. Have to bury a mother, bury a father, bury a child, bury a best friend, get a foreclosure notice, your car be picked up, they lay you off your job while you're on vacation, you come back and they have a box at the door saying they don't need you anymore. Get hit hard enough. And you won't feel as strong. Your faith may be like that. But God said, that's okay. I can work with that. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, I can move mountains. I can work with you. I can work with you. Critics will say and do things to try to stop you. But I advise you to keep working. Disregard what doesn't lend itself to the best part of who you are. Third, is if your critic is not in the arena doing the most critical work, you have every right to ignore them. Yeah. You do. You have every right. We think that we have to pay attention to everything that's said and done to us. And you really don't. Denise James says, amen. She says, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, Denise. Let people say what they say and do what they do. And you go on about your business. You are on an assignment. So many successful people never would have achieved their dreams had they turned and responded to every dog that barked. It takes courage to do life's work. And though your critic is not concerned with the hundreds, thousands, and millions you inspire, they somehow feel that their single comment has the power to change your destiny. And it will if you let it. Ida says, please ignore them. Keep pressing. The public service announcement they are sending out is they have more power than the one who created you. And that, my friend, is a false illusion. That is a false illusion. You are who God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. And Calvin, you can go where God says you can go. Weapons may form, but they will not prosper. They may hurt your feelings. They may make you cry. They may make you walk down to the, uh, to the mourner's bench on Sunday morning, but they will not prosper. You stay out of the gutter. You stay out of the gutter with other people. You are in the arena doing life's most critical work. I want you to come up from the basement if you've been down there. If they forced you down there with them, come up from the basement. You don't say anything bad about anybody. God knows how to handle those who have mishandled you. You keep your mouth off of other people and you stay in a place where you can be blessed. He who controls the sun, the moon, and the stars, I want you to know he also has your destiny in the palm of his hands. Don't you go there with people. Don't you go there with people. Ida says we're on an assignment to fulfill the purpose God has for us. Nona says, yes, ma'am. I don't worry about what people say. They talk about Jesus and he is still blessing. Allison said, if God is for you, who can be against you? Nona says, thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. We all have a totality. We are more than just what people see and criticize. But the God in us won't let us go there. We forget when we're coming after somebody for whatever reason, she's also just buried her mama. She also has a daughter who's in prison. She's also caring for her grandchildren. She's also living in a shelter. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But the devil in you causes you, for whatever reason, to go after somebody. So what? You can quote a scripture. We can all do that. We can all do that. But can you love? 
You know how to love people who look like Jesus, but do you know how to love the Judases? Because see, Jesus went where nobody else would go. He hung out with folk that nobody else would hang out with. He didn't just hang out with church folk. In fact, Jesus left home early. He experienced that a prophet is not welcome in his own home. Jesus took off. That's where he did his ministry. Yeah. He didn't do his ministry at church. He took off. He did his ministry in the street, on the road. <laughs> yeah. In some dusty places, in some filthy places. He met some people who had fell off the bandwagon. That's where Jesus did his ministry. But you and I, you know, we want to toss out a scripture. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that every man is right in his own eyes. So that means all of us can come up with a scripture to contradict what the other person has said. God said, don't, don't be about that foolishness. There are too many people who are hurting and who need help. Yeah. Sylvia says, congrats, Joey. We have no doubt you pack a grace-filled punch. Doors are open wide for you. You've told us many times God will make room for our gifts and present us before great men. What a father. Oh, what a father. You are absolutely. Thank you. I receive that, Sylvia. Yes. Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift will make room for him and place him before great men. What is your gift? Not who talks about you. Who ridicules you? He didn't say anything about their gift. He said your gift. Will you stay in your gift? Will you stay in your anointing? Will you keep doing what God called you to do even when folk don't understand it? Even when people will come after you? Will you keep doing it? Yeah. Because you are the man in the arena. Allison says amen to that. We can't pick, choose who we minister to. Absolutely. Tiffany says yes, beyond the four walls. It is beyond the four walls. Yeah. Ida says they are talking because we're standing out shining like a diamond and they want what we got. And they have to, uh, all they have to do is ask. We did it. We came asking, seeking, and knocking. And God answered. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Don't let jealousy, envy, rivalry, conjecture, speculation, don't let those things get in the way of you being blessed. Your gift will make room for you. God has promised that and he cannot lie. If God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I want you to stop being selective about who you like, who you don't like, who you're going to talk to, who you're not going to talk to, what group you're going to be a part of. Honey, God ain't in that. He ain't in that foolishness. That's us. <laughs> That's us and our ignorance. God ain't in that. He can bless whoever he wants to bless and he can curse whoever he wants to curse. I want you to be amazing today. If nobody has told you that they love you, let me tell you, sis, I love you, Calvin, I love you. And there ain't one thing, not one thing you can do about it. We are children of the Most High. He has placed his stamp of approval on us. You are head and not the tail. You are the first and not the beginning. You are above and not beneath. You are the apple of God's eye. You are royal priesthood, a chosen generation. You are a city that sits high on a hill that cannot be hid. You are not stuck this morning. You've just decided to stop moving. I want you to move. I want you to get up. You are not depressed. I'm not going to claim that over your life. You are not. You are just uninspired. And I hope today you'll go back and listen to this again. I hope I've said something to inspire you. Ida says, my gift made room for me. Natasha is clapping. Yeah. I hope I've inspired you. You just need to be motivated. I hope I've motivated you. Motivation is taken from the Latin word motir, which means to take action. Just keep getting up, y'all. Putting one foot in front of the other. Denise is clapping. Allison says, yes, you did. Let them talk. Let them talk. Let them say what they're going to say. They don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in, but God does. God does. And he loves you. Listen, y'all, I got to get out of here. I got places to go. People see things to do. I know you do, too. I know you do too. This is a fantastic, fabulous Friday. Enjoy this day. Share this message with a friend. Go back and listen to it again and be blessed. You, you, my friend, you are the man or the woman that's in the arena doing the most critical work.
I want you to have a good weekend. I'm not here on the weekends, but I look forward to meeting you back here on Monday morning. Sister Phyllis, Rebecca Holt Davis, a beautiful woman of God, says, amen, little sister. I love you, Sister Davis, and I'm praying for uh, Brother Davis' health always. Allison says, yes, you did. Ida is on fire. Denise says, yes, you did. Take care. I look forward to meeting you back here Monday morning. Have a blessed weekend.